Good morning, friends. It's wonderful to be with you again this morning. We have been in the last few weeks looking at the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And today I would like to uh, conclude um, that message on, on the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And our reading will be taken from Daniel 3, from 26b to the end of that chapter. Um, it ends at verse 30. Let us listen to the word of God. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched. There was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their bodies be turned into piles of a rubble for no other god can save in this way then the king promoted shadrach meshach and abednego in the province of babylon may the lord bless to us the reading of his word now and forever amen well, in, in concluding chapter 3 of the book of Daniel, I would like to look at the faithfulness of God. God had allowed Nebuchadnezzar to witness an incredible sight. He had instructed that this three be thrown into, into this fire and for, for some reasons uh, beyond his understanding, beyond his grasp, God has gone on an incredible rescue mission. So he orders that they be taken out of the burning and the blazing furnace that had been burned seven times hotter and they were thrown by strong soldiers. The soldiers themselves perished in this fire. In verse 25, Nebuchadnezzar look into the furnace, into this fire. And look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed. And the, fair, and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. So God has allowed him to see this vision, this, this, this happening. He called the three, and as he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he referred to them as the servants of, of the Most High. He realizes that they are the servant of the Most High. And he orders them, come out, come here. 
When they came out, the fire had not done anything to them. Nothing had been done to them. They were not affected by this fire. Their bodies were unharmed. Nor the hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched. No smell of a fire on them. So nothing had happened to them. As they were thrown into the fire, they emerged from this fire, the same people. But something has happened. Remember that they were bound with ropes, but these ropes had been unbound. The promise in Isaiah 43 verse 2, the promise of God is, is realized by these three. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. Flames will not set you ablaze. Now Nebuchadnezzar halted his plan that he had put in place, ordering the nation to worship the golden image he had created. He now issues a new decree. Therefore, I decree people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, be cut into pieces, and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. Nebuchadnezzar exalted the living God. In Isaiah 33, 10, it says, Now will I be exalted, and now I will be lifted up. And this is what he does. He exalts God. He orders the nation. He orders everyone. He reverses the decree that he had put in place earlier, that a golden image that he created be worshipped. Now he has seen the faithfulness of God. He has seen the amazing obedience of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their loyalty to God. They are resolved to worship only God and how God has come to their rescue. And so he orders everyone that they need and they must worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When God delivers his people, he not only delivers them from fire, he delivers them through fire. People lost a life in this fire. But these three young men were delivered from this fire. We seek deliverance in our lives. Deliverance from pain and aches, from disease, from fear, from guilt, from bitterness. And with the experiences of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it's a God giving us a guarantee that he will bring to an end the suffering and the sorrow, the struggle and the pain. Because he not only delivers us from that, he Keep us company in times of great 
struggle and pain in our lives so that he can bring us through whatever challenges that we are facing in our lives. Things in, in the world can reflect the painful elements of the human life. So many things that threaten our existence on this planet. Earthquakes, tsunamis, bring devastation, fires, floods, drought, disease. All these things can cause havoc on our lives. Currently, we are going through a very painful season of COVID-19 and the devastation that it has caused. The destruction of people, of communities. Destruction of life, of human life. But we live in hope in the knowledge that our God will deliver us from fire. He will deliver us through fire. And one day, the clouds that, that we see will disperse. The threat that we face will recede and the hope will return. We fear all manner of things. Crime, when we experience political upheavals, the economical ruin, family breakdown, unemployment, illnesses, and many more. Some of these things that we are fearful about never happen. They don't come to pass. Some of them do come. And perhaps majority of them don't. But whatever season, whatever come into our lives, we, we know, we have seen the faithfulness of God, that they don't last, that things that come our way will pass. That was the experience of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The experience of the blazing furnace passed and God delivered them from this fire. God showed them his glory and his power. God honored their faithfulness God honored their obedience. To the extent that Nebuchadnezzar was left with no option but to exalt the might and the power and the sovereignty of God. And he not only did that, he also promoted them. So even when we, when we go through, through challenges, when we go through painful time, when we express our obedience and our loyalty to God, when our worship is centered on Him, because we, we know that He is faithful, He honors our obedience. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were honored. They they were given bigger responsibilities within the Babylonian Empire. And Nebuchadnezzar was quite clear where they stood in terms of, of their worship, obedience to God. The crucifixion of Jesus is a reminder to us that even when things are tough, when things are bleak and there is no hope, God always, in situation of hopeless and despair, bring hope. Because through the crucifixion of Jesus, we experienced his resurrection. As God overpowers darkness and death and pain and restored life. So we know that all the pain, all the sadness, all the challenges that we face will pass. They will come to an end. And one day we will experience the resurrection power of Christ in our lives. And as we experience this resurrection power, we will experience the amazing renewal of God in our lives. And I pray that, that in whatever circumstances, in whatever challenges that you are facing in your life, that this incredible and powerful story of God's company that he keep with his people, even in situation that when we look at it, there, there is no hope of escape. There is no way that they will come out. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into this blazing furnace, they, for, for them as well, it was, it was uncertainty. Remember that there were two things that they mentioned. That we will stick by our God as we go into this furnace. Because we know that he will deliver us. But they also said that even if something happened and we are not going to be delivered from this fire, but we will always worship him as our God. Because we know that ultimately, at the end of things, that whatever he planned, will unfold according to his plans. In Philippians, Paul reminds us that whenever God starts something, he holds on to what he had started and he sees what he has started to completion. So God finishes everything that he has started. Even in our lives, whatever good thing God has started in your life, he will not rest. He will not rest until he has completed whatever he had planned for your life. My prayer is that you will live your life in obedience and loyal to the Father who loves you, who cares deeply about you and your life. The Father who sees you 
through the challenges of this life. Whether you find yourself going in fire, sitting in fire, we know that God will deliver us through this fire. May you be blessed. May he embrace you. May you experience the warmth that flows from the heart of the loving Father. Amen. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we glorify your name. We exalt your name. Nebuchadnezzar realized when everything that he had planned was thwarted that there is no God like you. And he ordered his nation, he ordered people of all, every language to bow down and worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because he had experienced your faithfulness firsthand, he has seen how you came to rescue your children when they were in the middle of blazing furnace when he was sure that he was destroying them in this fire. He saw among them the fourth person. He saw this radiance in this furnace. And as he looked, he, he admitted that this fourth person looked like the Son of Man. And Father, as we have gone through this story, we have realized how much more he came to the realization and bowed down to worship because he encouraged others to worship you. So we exalt your name on high. We give glory and honor to you, mighty God. You are our God. You are our Father. We trust in you. We believe in you. We, we believe in the promises that you have made. We believe that you will see us through the challenges that we face. We believe, Father, that you will continue to provide that you will continue to keep us company in the midst of the challenges and sometimes the sad experiences that we go through in this life. We believe, Father, that the painful elements that we experience in our human life, whether, Father, the are natural disasters that we sometimes experience and destroy life. We think of earthquakes, we think of tsunamis, we think of floods, of droughts, of diseases, things that causes havoc in human life. We think, Father, of this season with COVID-19. We think, Father, of, of pain, of struggle that people go through. And so, Father, we, we know that we can count on you. We know that you are faithful. We know, Father, that you keep a company with your people. We know, Father, that even in fears that things that make us fearful, whether it's crime, political upheavals, economical ruin, 
the breakdown in family life, unemployment, illnesses, and many things that happen and causes imbalances in the lives of your people. We know, Father, that you deliver your people through these set experiences. Father, that you can be trusted, that you are reliable. I pray, Father, that you will strengthen our faith, that you will enable us, Lord, to dig wells that bring living waters into our lives. Wells that are the reservoirs of healing and restoration. Wells that are reservoirs of forgiveness. Wells that are reservoirs of love of mercy, of kindness, of grace. Well, so that enable us to witness your, your power in ways that are beyond our understanding and grasp. And so, Lord, we, we pray that you will continue to keep your people safe. We thank you, Lord, for the incredible way that you come into our lives and manifest your glory. And Father, as we, as we reflect on this season of COVID, we are thankful for how you have taken us through this last few months we were quite fearful of the devastation because the models that were presented predicted an incredible devastation of the human society in South Africa. And Lord, we, we celebrate that we, we come through this time having witnessed your love in an incredible way. And we continue to lift our society further. As predictions are that we might find ourselves in the second wave, Father, that we will continue to trust you. We will continue to rely on your faithfulness. And so, Father, we, we pray for people who are experiencing um, the, the pain and the sadness because they are either infected or affected. We think of those who have, who have died. We think of the health professionals, Father, who are on the front line working hard to alleviate the suffering and pain. We pray, Lord, for the resources. We pray for your continual presence and company going forward. We pray, Father, for your continual provisions in our lives, that you will continue to give us food, that you will continue to give us shelter, that you will continue to give us your presence and your company. We pray this in Jesus' name. The Lord who has rescued us because of his incredible love for us. And in his name we pray. Amen. Just to end 
this time. I will love to read with you from um, the letter that Paul writes um, to the Ephesians. I like that one because it's 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 an incredible promise of God to us. Listen to what he says. It's Ephesians um, chapter 1 and just a few verses reading from um, verse 11. He says, in him it, it is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eyes on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and in everyone. It is in Christ that you, once you had the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation. You found yourselves a home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This is a signet from God is the first installment on what is coming. A reminder that we will get everything God has planned for us. A praise Him and a glorious life. God bless you, friends. Amen.